In this series, we will be discussing specific examples of design techniques that can make a positive difference for people living with certain human conditions. The more a designer understands the client and or the community, the more effective and respectful the design will be. Welcome to Inclusive Designers Podcast. I'm your host, Janet Roach. And I'm your moderator, Carolyn Robbins. Today, we're going to take a look at Neocon 2019, which just took place in Chicago in June. What it is, what it means to designers, and also about some of the new products that could be of interest to inclusive designers. Neocon calls itself the design industry's launchpad for innovation, offering ideas and introductions that shape the built environment today and into the future. Since 1969, the design community has been converging at Neocon to connect, learn, and do business. Known manufacturers, as well as hot emerging companies, showcase thousands of new products and services in categories including furniture, fabrics, flooring, interior building products, interior finishes, and technology. That gives you the textbook definition of what it is, but my co-podcaster can give you a bit more personal description of what it's like. Janet, tell us a little bit about your recent visit to Neocon and your experience as both a presenter and as an attendee. I took the opportunity to explore the floor at the Mart in Chicago and talk to all sorts of people about their products and what makes them stand out from all the rest. We learned about the benefits of good acoustics with Cheryl Cramp at Snow Sound. We talked dirty about antimicrobial services with the guys from Frutris. Contemplate biophilia applications from Moss boss Lindsay Sher Burgess from Green Wallscapes, as well as a host of other healthy options for the workplace, such as healthy rugs, standing desks, one of my favorites, even took a desk for a ride. Well, kinda. I also had a chance to talk with my colleague, Denise Rush, who is the Dean and Instructor of Interior Architecture Program at the Boston Architectural College, where I also teach. We discuss the benefits students can get out of coming to Neocon. I am here with somebody who I consider, I am very lucky to consider my friend, and I'm gonna have her introduce herself. Okay, I'm Denise Rush. I work at the Boston Architectural College where I'm the Dean of the Interior Architecture Program. And what exactly does a Dean at the Architectural Interior Architectural Program at the BAC do? A lot of administrative work. <laughs> and I also teach a few classes, but I'm always looking for the latest and greatest design information to share with the students and building the curriculum um, to improve it. And that's why you come to Neocon? Absolutely. It's so many new product introductions or product redos, lots of seminars and CEUs. So it's very educational and informative. And there's nobody better than you to have that kind of education. You were the first person that told me about Neocon. So I thank you very much. Um, and so what was your experience this year for Neocon 2019? Well, this year for the first time, I had two students participating in the IIDA interior design um, student competition. And so that was incredible to see the students who are the future of um, the profession be able to create a design solution in one day and present it to judges in a professional manner. So that was, for me as an educator, was my highlight. And you thought it went well? Yes, I did. Any thoughts that you want to add to the, the idea, the conference? Uh, well, I'm hoping to have more students come to the BAC. And it was great seeing you as a um, alum and an educator of the BAC presenting at Neocon. So I hope to see more colleagues present and attend Neocon. That would be great. Thank you so much, Denise. Thank you for being my guest today. You're welcome. And you have a good rest of your trip here. Will do. Thanks. See you back in Boston. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> See you in Boston. I know you also interviewed some of the vendors on the show floor, too. Take us through some of the products you found that you think inclusive designers need to know about. Well, Carolyn, I did get a chance to talk to all sorts of different types of vendors, but some of the ones I found the most interesting were the ones that came up with products that were dirty, sexy, or even sassy. I first did a demo with a company called Snow Sound 
that makes noise dampening panels. This can be a very good resource for designing for noisy surroundings or for those who need to create a more calming setting. And you don't have to be an interior designer to know how very important that can be. Let's take a listen. Was that a pun, Carolyn? It wasn't intentional, but now that you pointed it out, yeah, you know I like that. Yeah, it's very you. Meanwhile, here is your interview with Snow Sound. Here I am at Neocon 2019, and I met this lovely woman, Cheryl Cramp, from Snow Sound. And she's going to talk a little bit about sound and how it's important for us. Good afternoon, Cheryl. Hi, how are you? I'm doing very well. Tell us a little bit about the different types of sound and, and what you guys do here at Snow Sound. Okay, great. So Snow Sound came about uh, basically when you're in snow and it falls in different layers and air pockets, um, you get different types of densities. So we want to cover all those types of absorption through those three densities, the low, the medium, and the high. So that's how our panels have the patented technology inside of them so that it mimics how snow falls. And it's very calm and serene. So sound absorption, we wanted to do that with our panels. So with our patent technology, we cover all three densities so that you get that same calming noise to get reverberation and echoing out of your um, space. Terrific. Now talk to my listeners a little bit about acoustics and what does that mean? Sure. So there's three types of sound. Basically there's sound absorption, there's sound blocking, and then there's sound masking. What snow sound does is we do sound absorption. Let's go into the different ones. So sound absorption is basically taking the frequencies and getting less echo and reverberation in a room. Sound blocking is basically used, used as a drywall or architectural glass in solid surfaces to block out noise. Sound masking is reducing white noise and speech privacy. So those are actual machines that you put in your rooms uh, that make noise to get rid of any other noise. So what we do is sound absorption, basically minimizing the noise and echo and the reverberation in the room. We don't want to kill noise. We just want to make it to have a, a comfortable conversation in a room. So sound absorption, you want to use, make sure that you ask about an, an NRC rating. Sorry, I'll stop you right there. What is an NRC rating? It's called noise reduction coefficient. It's a number that they test basically for how much material is absorbing the sound. So think of it as a sponge. A sound absorption as a sponge. Um, like a sponge, it absorbs water. So an acoustic panel basically absorbs sound with the NRC rating that it soaks it up. Sound absorption is a process where sound waves is taken up and soaked in both those surfaces. So sound absorption products are intended to absorb the unwanted noise like echo within a space. But again, we're not trying to reduce uh, or make it silent. We're just trying to minimize that echo and reverberation in a room. Terrific. Thank you. So Cheryl's going to take us into the Snow Sound Experience Room. It is a metal room, which is about made of steel. What is it? About maybe six by six, six feet by six feet, right? And we're going to experience the sound in terms of what it sounds outside in the conference area, then also inside the box. And then she will show us the difference with the uh, Snow Sound uh, fibers on the wall. So why don't we talk a little bit about snow sounds, different types of fibers and different types of products and what are we going to experience in the experience room? Great, so we actually have all our panel collections, which is our traditional snow sound technology panels. And then we also have our fiber finish products, which is our fabric line. And uh, that has a different type of technology in it. And it's based on a soft interwoven polyester acoustic fiber, um, that interaction between the special fiber and how it's woven. Um, and that's how our fabrics uh, work with, uh, in, within the space. So myself, and Cheryl and Jory, we're going to go into the Snow Sound Experience Room. The next sound you'll hear is inside the Experience Room prior to the fibers being attached to the wall. Hi, we also have Phil Buchanan here today. We're doing a little podcast and we're talking about how this particular experience is really drives home the point of having different types of um, uh, acoustic panels and acoustic, what would you call it? Acoustic solution. Acoustic solution. And acoustic experience. Acoustic experience. 
So we're in a room that's boxed up, made out of steel, and you hear a lot of echoing and reverberation in the room. And so we're going to show you how our snow sound fiber, which is our fabric textile, works. So I'm just going to keep on talking because I want you to hear the difference as soon as I pull this out. So my voice, I'm not changing the volume of my voice. I'm just talking in my normal tone that I was. But pulling out one side of the fabric just reduced a little bit of the echo and reverberation in the room. And now I'm pulling out the second type of fabric and the echo and the reverberation is completely gone in the space. I mean, it's still the same metal box that we walked into, but now it literally has what I would argue are curtain panels, but it has your particular type of fiber on them or that's the, the, the weave that's in there. Yes. And it has brought the vibration and the acoustics down to almost nothing. So now we're going, so we have just finished up the experience and now you're going to remove the panels. Yes. So right now it sounds really, really great in here. And I think I'd like to have a conversation in here, but now I'm gonna remove one and then make sure that it's starting to echo a little bit now. So that's one. And now I'm going to completely remove the second one. And we're going to go back to the way that the room just sounded when we just got here with nothing, no acoustics whatsoever inside. Now we're back to having echoing and reverberation. And Philip gives two thumbs up. Oh, yeah, definitely. This, this solves the problem. It's a great solution. So it's magic. It is magic. So, Cheryl, you were telling me something kind of interesting about how snow sound was coming up with some design solutions for the workplace. Do you want to talk to the listeners a little bit about that and, and what was going on, what were the solutions and what was the outcome? Yeah, great. So when we're designing for a workplace, we want to make sure that there's productivity, right? So um, a lot of disruptions happen when you have an open workspace, when there's no more cubes and you're all working together collaboratively. You're hearing noises, other people talking, you hear uh, music going on. So better acoustics in a workplace is going to increase more productivity. Um, it has proven benefits for employee well-being as well as satisfaction and comfort. So with Snow Sound Technology, it significantly enhances an environment acoustics by selectively absorbing that optimal amount of sound at different frequencies and reducing unwanted reverberation, which makes for a happy and healthy workplace. Cheryl, that was fantastic. We love that information and I know my listeners do too. Well, thank you so much for visiting Snow Sound. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Cheryl. If you were listening on headphones, you probably could hear the echo drop out even more. I was definitely impressed with the demonstration, as was Phil. Staying on the topic of sound dampening, you discovered another product that provides it in a very green way. Yes, Green Wallscapes uses moss to both bring some biophilia into a space and adds acoustic benefits as well. Let's hear about how it can be used in both office and healthcare settings. So now here I am with... Hi, I'm Lindsay with Green Wallscapes. Um, we do preserved moss, walls, logos, lettering, art um, for commercial interiors all over the country. Um, we started our business kind of by accident. We saw something we liked on Pinterest and then started making pieces and people started calling us and then we now have done over 120 projects in the last year. So it's a really exciting thing. I think we've jumped on the bandwagon at the right time and it's really, really awesome. Can you speak a little bit about moss? I mean, we have an idea what moss is, but can you talk to the listeners a little bit more about what is moss and how you can apply it? Sure. So with our application, you can do it on the walls, you can do it on the ceilings, you can insert it into furniture, um, you can use it as you know complements to acoustic tiling. Um, there's a lot of different applications that can be used for it. Um, we specialize in very custom pieces. We can do paneling and we do that very, very well and we are very cost effective with that. But we really specialize in someone who wants something that's really out of the box and wants to bring nature into their spaces. It's also a great application um, where there's not a lot of light, there isn't uh, a lot of um, a, a lot of you don't, you're not there's no requirements for watering or other things like that so there's not a huge maintenance application with this so it's a really nice solution for people who just aren't 
and which is most office environments where they just don't want to deal with it. They don't want to pay for the maintenance. They don't want to worry about plants dying. They don't want to worry about insects. They just want something that's beautiful and green on the walls. Um, and I can tell you, uh, clients have called me and said, like, I just feel better when I'm looking at this. And that's part of sort of what we were talking about earlier, you know, that biophilic design, you know, really resonating with our true nature. And so it's a really great way to do that without all the maintenance and the hassle of having living plants. We love living plants. We have plenty of them in our studio. We can encourage people to do living applications. It's just this is a, a more cost-effective, easier application for walls. Um, and it can be done in a lot of different ways. Well, you just really kind of nicely summed that all up. I don't have a lot more questions. Uh, two things. Uh, talk a little bit about the healthcare um, application that you did just recently, and also then talk to uh, the listeners a little bit more about uh, the upkeep and what does that mean in terms of you know cleanliness. I think people get a little worried about dust and and that kind of thing but we'll start with the you know the example of the healthcare application and describe the situation and and what the benefits were so um you know we've gotten calls from doctors offices and other places who want to do this this is a, it's not there's no allergy it's not a living material so there's no allergies associated with moss itself when it's living doesn't really have a lot of allergens or anything like that so it, in terms of like benefits in the space, it does create like kind of a natural organic um, acoustical panel. So that helps keep that sort of all a factory issue down. Um, we don't, we haven't certified all of this stuff yet, but it makes sense. It's a, sp it's, it's a poofy material you're sticking on the wall. It's gonna have some acoustical benefits. Um, and then, you know, the other thing is like, like I said, it's that sort of wellness from like just looking at something beautiful and looking at something natural. Um, in terms of cleaning, um, we suggest people either mist it with water or you can also blow dry it with like on cold. Um, and, and that only needs to be done like a couple of times a year. Um, and again, it's really just, you know, you put it on the wall, you enjoy it, and it's better not to touch it. It doesn't like a lot of attention. You know, it, it doesn't want people, you know, touching and interacting with it too, too much. The moss doesn't want any attention. Yes, it doesn't want any attention. I like to say that it's a little sassy. When we first put it in, it's always like a little bit like it needs a minute and then it, you know, it's happy and it knows it's got its new home. So no, it's a it's it's a really fun thing, and like I said, if you want panels, we do that. If you want logos, we do that. If you want cool lettering, there's a lot of really funky applications that we've started to do that are very outside of the box. So, well, that's terrific, Lindsay. And Green Wallscapes is the name of the company, and um, it will be put up on uh, InclusiveDesigners.com uh, website. And thank you so much, Lindsay, for stopping by today. Thank you so much for having me. Who knew Moss could be sassy? I like how she calls herself the Moss Boss. She's kind of sassy herself. Now moving on to some of the options for furniture. Who impressed you there? I met with the founders of Fuchis who make Corian furniture. They have the ability to create unique designs that can be very adaptable for use in healthcare. Here is that interview with the co-founders of Fuchis. I am still here at Neocon, day two, and I am here with James Lee, co-founder of Futurist. Mark Allen, head designer and co-founder of Futurist. And Futurist is spelled F-U-T-R-U-S. Yes, and all the information will be on the um, inclusivedesigners.com uh, website. So I found what you guys do quite be quite interesting. Tell me a little bit about, I don't know who wants to start, all right, so Mark is going to start first. Um, tell me a little bit about the, the company and the product and the, the people that you're serving. Yeah, so Futures is a casework and furniture company that's really focused on building products with Corian. So we're exclusively built with Corian ports and Corian solid surface. And we mainly uh, focus on not only healthcare, but commercial spaces and providing those kind of solutions that are built to last, durable, adaptable, and really going to stand the test of time. Now, what makes your product stand out and your company stand out versus other companies that might be here at this show? So I think there's a few things that really set us apart from other manufacturers. Uh, one is that our designs are very much adaptable. So, you know, they have a lot more uh, flexibility in terms of design. So whether it's the sizes, it's the base styles, it's the colors, we offer a lot more design flexibility than other companies. Another thing that we did was um, 
alongside uh, DuPont's R&D team, we developed a patented structural system. So what this enables designers to do is actually increase the scale of their solutions without the need of additional support. So for instance, we can build a Parsons table to about 12 feet uh, without the additional support in the middle. The structural framing system also provides greater durability, impact resistance, and it also allows Corian to expand and contract in different heats. If you don't use a structural framing system like ours, then there is sometimes the danger of the Corian actually splitting, but with our system that we ensure complete structural stability. Now, I was here yesterday and one of your sales reps had told me, I thought it was kind of a fun fact that you guys, because of these particular types of systems that you put into place, that you can kind of really mold the furniture into basically anything that I want. Is that correct? That's true. We have a set number of standard shapes and sizes, but then there's some, as James mentioned, adaptability to what you can do with it. And that leads us into other products and we do quite a bit of applications using our systems. Now, one of the things that, as uh, designers for, for health and well-being, we are very concerned with corners. And so you could easily mold something and, and create, uh, like, rounded edges. Absolutely. Soft round corners are, are very big in the industry, obviously, especially in healthcare. So we'll see a lot of that used as a detail, and that certainly helps protect patients. And lastly, can you just speak a little bit about the benefits um, that Corian provides. Um, I know it's antimicrobial. Can you give us any statistics on that? So it's antimicrobial. It's also the only solid surface that's GreenGuard certified against microbial growth. So that's the, the one thing that really sets it apart in terms of certifications. Uh, it's obviously seamless, so there's no areas for bacteria to collect, um, dirt and germs. It's bleach cleanable. It's food rated, it's fire rated, A1, um, it's low VOC. But the things that really set Corian apart as well is, unlike certain other solid surface manufacturers, the certifications run across every single color that Corian provides, as opposed to just, say, a handful of colors from other solid surface manufacturers. So with Corian, you really do get that trust across the entire brand offering. Absolutely, they're known throughout the industry, but I thought it was kind of great in what you guys do and, 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 and the ability for designers then to create their own product out of your materials, which is fab. We're really about you know creating unique looks and maybe surprise areas, maybe taking the product and really using it in a unique way is really part of our DNA. Terrific. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you so much for having me stop by. Thank you. I just learned that Corian is antimicrobial too. Good to know. Antimicrobial is important not only in healthcare settings, but if you have a client who has a weak autoimmunity. And the products futurists were exhibiting at Neocon were really fantastic. That's great. Moving along, who did you talk to next, Janet? I learned about a new product line from a furniture company called Stance that takes behavioral problems and patient safety into consideration in designing their furniture. We'll let them explain more about that. Hi, I'm Craig Gustafson. I'm the National Sales Director for Stance Healthcare. And we are a healthcare company, but a lot of our products end up in different areas. And one of our specialties, which we'll talk about today, is behavioral health and what, what products we manufacture and sort of where we're going with that uh, to help sort of humanize that environment and bring in a lot of different aspects of comfort in places that can be kind of scary sometimes. So. I think that that's so fabulous. So, so we're standing sort of in the middle of the showroom here at Neocon, and uh, can you talk to us a little bit about some of the products that you guys are showing today? Sure. Yeah, we've got some standard products that we're using for um, our, our, our sort of our standard healthcare product offerings. Some of those will be adapted for behavioral health as well that do not look like behavioral health products, but that really are built extremely well, safe, durable, uh, and easy to clean, the things that you need to, uh, to literally look at when you're looking at behavioral health environments. And today, one of our new products as we're looking at here is, is called uh, our Frontier Series. And so um, it's hard to make plastic look sexy, but it, well, I'll tell you some of the different <laughs> things about it that are fairly unique. 
All right, so we are actually looking at a, a plastic bed and two plastic um, uh, sideboard or side tables, right? Yes. Or, right. So can you, right? So because we, we're not, we will try to post some pictures, and we will have uh, links on the inclusive designers uh, dot com uh, website, but. Just for, for listening purposes, can you talk to us a little bit about the, the product? Sure. Yeah, this is all called our Frontier Series, and it's it's actually polyethylene-based, uh, and so it's a roto-molded product. What's unique about it is we've actually added foam inside for a couple things. One, to add weight to it, so it's very difficult for someone to move this around in a patient room. And again, this is for a patient room that's people may be abusive uh, or the, with the environment like adolescents which I had four adolescents and they were abusive with furniture <laughs> and they weren't even in behavioral health facility <laughs> Uh, but also, you know, some people that may be harmful to themselves or others. And so what we've done is we've tried to make, obviously, safety is our number one concern. You know, durability and, you know, we know it's going to be used and, uh, you know, possibly abused. So we want to make sure that it's extremely durable. So with this product, what we've done, we've taken a standard bed, which a lot of them are hollow inside, but we put foam in it to do one, uh, two things. One, add weight to it. So it's very difficult to pick this up and move it around. It's extremely heavy. We can also bolt it to the floor using a cam lock sort of mechanism. And then what we've done too is a lot, sometimes in this population you have issues with incontinence or spills. Right. And so we've actually have sort of a moisture system that we've taken channels. And so when you do have, when you do have liquids, uh, this will sort of dissipate to the side. You can do a quick cleanup and then get you know, housekeeping to come in to, to, to really do a deep clean on the mattress. So it's not as icky when you pick it up. Uh, right. when there's lots of fluid. So this is very unique. We're the only ones that are doing this right now. So we think, again, about safety durability. Um, we also scallop the sides so that way when you're getting in and out of the bed, it's very easy and comfortable so your, your thighs are not being hit uh, when you're right. doing that. And then our bedside ca uh, tables, those simply flip over. So you can use it if someone's keeping a journal or coloring, etc. For the top, uh, or like you see on the other side, you can put your uh, clothing on the top and then maybe your sword, store your shoes on the side. So what we're actually looking at is, is one, uh, depending on what side is up, um, it's a, a smaller shelf or a larger shelf. So, yeah. right? is that yeah. It, yeah, it's very simple, but these are sort of ambidextrous. You can flip them around depending on what you're using. Right. So yeah, it's it's um, yeah, this is a newer product, and uh, we're the only ones that are doing this, making it this way. So it's fairly unique. Uh, that's terrific. And so, are there any other benefits to this particular system that you can think of that before before we sign off? Yeah, again, safety and durability. And so we've got a nice color palette that we've taken. It's muted colors and adds some design to it because some of the ones that are out there are pretty industrial looking. And so just the, it's more soothing. And, and that's what the color palette was very, very carefully selected by our behavioral health specialist, Suzanne Foley. And so she's really was the one that designed this whole product line. Has she talked to you about any of the reasons why she came up with these particular design ideas? Suzanne, do you think that she would want you to add anything, like in terms of like health and wellness of the, somebody who is having behavioral problems and in, in, in terms of the furniture? What do, you, what do you think? Yeah, I think what we're trying to do is build in the, the safety and durability in this product line and again not have it be scary looking and so it's inviting and the color palette we've chosen uh, she was very selective about that what colors uh, would really help in the healing process and in our showroom we see we're bringing in a lot of green we've got more of sort of a garden feel yeah. Yeah. because uh, it, it works in regular healthcare environments it's really working in behavioral health and we're finding that a lot of patients too are part of their therapy is planting and, and really um, helping nurture plants outside and bringing that into the environment. So it's right. Uh, something that... Right, the whole biophilia um, aspect of a lot of the furniture that I'm seeing here and in, in all your pieces and, and, and how you're designing things is really, is it's coming it's coming through. And, and as a, a designer who appreciates biophilia and, and the help that it, it provides in calming the, the mind and the soul and, and uh, every fiber of your being being. It's just fabulous. Thank you so much for uh, joining us today, Craig. Thank you. Appreciate it. Craig was informative on Stance's Frontier series, and I think he hinted at the idea that the series was sexy. He was a great interview. Sexy furniture is always good. <laughs> 
Yes, it is. <laughs> Let's now turn to some of the new technology. I imagine you must have seen some interesting gadgets. Anything in particular that is worth sharing here? Yes, actually there were quite a few. Here's one I thought was cool. It's a new way to get folks moving more in the workplace on a regular basis. And it was created by a physical therapist at SmartPods Technology. He gets the desk actually moving to move up and down during the day to ensure that you're sitting and standing. Sounds like something we can all use. Let's hear more about that. And who am I standing next to? Leon DeRoche, CEO of SmartPods. And what does SmartPods do? So in a nutshell, smart pods, uh, my background as a physiotherapist, uh, what we decided to do a few years ago was to try to get people moving more into the workplace. So we were aware, uh, as well as some of my clients or some of my patients had sit-stand desks, but they just weren't using them. And why is that? Uh, as a matter of fact, less than 10% of the population does end up using them and simply it's because they're too focused on what they're doing on a regular basis. So they get focused on their screen and even though they should move, well they don't necessarily move. So our device, what it does, it actually automates the whole system. So users can actually enter their information specifically to how often they want to move and then they, they just have to work and as they're working the desk will actually start to rise and lower. But what that does, it brings nutrition to the joints, it allows the muscles to move, and it just allows the person to feel better. Terrific. Now, so can you explain to our listeners, because they can't see what's going on, and, and again, just want to remind my listeners that uh, SmartPods will have all their information on the website, inclusivedesigners.com. Uh, but in the meanwhile, though, can you explain a little bit better, uh, again, to somebody who can't see right now, what you're talking about? Yeah, so essentially what we've done is we've, uh, we've developed a control box uh, that just replaces the handset on a desk. And uh, this control box is embedded with sensors, so it looks at occupancy, light, temperature, and sound. But once it's actually attached to that desk, uh, the user can either just download an application and then they just enter their profile and then they will start to move customized to them, right? Well, I see on the desk you have um, like what looks like maybe like my, my smartwatch. Do you know, is that is it? Right? Is what what is, what is that? What am I looking at? Right. So you have two options. You can either just uh, connect to our control box via a uh, tablet that resides just on your desk, or you can you don't necessarily need that tablet. You can actually just download the application on a laptop. So the nice thing about the laptop is if you're in an unassigned desking area, you just have to move that laptop from a desk to desk. When you arrive at that desk, the desk will lower to your heights and continue to do your activity profile. So you continue to move, which is a healthy component. Right. And we all know that that's a good thing. They, what do they say now? The uh, sitting is the new smoking. That's correct. Yeah. So sitting is the new smoking um, and people are starting to realize the negative impact of sitting. So they really want to start moving. They just don't always, you know, have the ability to do so. So with a technology like this, it just makes it so much easier. Now, one of the things that you had suggested, and I think it might be a selling point for you, is the idea that it is um, that it can help with productivity, and that people like management can see what HR can see, what uh, their employees are doing. Can you speak a little to that? Yeah. So what we do is again, it's all on the health and wellness side. So a facilities or HR managers can start to look at potentially different departments, you know, so they can look at one department versus another if they're moving more, moving less. Then they can start to make that correlation into productivity. We've seen uh, just for the simple fact that, you know, we look at temperature. We know that sometimes when the temperature is too high in facilities, we start to see people moving less. So these are just things that should be considered when you're starting to, you know, build buildings or looking at the environment. Thank you so much for bringing up that very important part. As somebody who's very sensitive to temperature, I find that temperature is one of the least things that people kind of talk about, and uh, and it always it differs between men and women as well in the work uh, workforce. So, so thank you for mentioning that, and maybe I'll get into that in a, another show at some point. So thanks for the little nudge. Um, 
I'm going to throw you a bit of a curveball. Um, so one of the things that I do, and it is called inclusive designers, but it's really about health and wellness. But for me, also, I wonder about people who might be in a wheelchair or people who might be, um, you know, less capable. Maybe somebody has MS. It might not even be that they're in uh, a wheelchair. And, 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 and how do you design around that? And what would your recommendations be for people who would want to buy a desk like this? So uh, say, for instance, you are as a physical therapist, you know, we have some of those clients that are in wheelchairs. So the, the desk or not the desk, but the technology itself can accommodate to some of those things. Um, it could get the desk to move, not necessarily in a standing position, but in a different position, because those people also have to move the upper limbs right the shoulders the back the thoracic spine so it could also be beneficial to them right in that sense we have new features that will be coming out in q3 q4 which really touches exercise and stretching at your desk so it combines all those components so even though you would have you know or potentially be in a wheelchair you could have other features that smart pods technology offers like stretching and other types of breaks that could be beneficial for the end user. That is so terrific. Thank you so much. Anything else you want to add for smart pods? Smart pods, I really love it. By the way, from Massachusetts, we would say smart pods. Smart pods, smart pods. <laughs> so is there anything else you want to add before I go? No, I, I just think uh, it's exciting for us to be able to uh, to be here, at number one, and be affiliated with some of these uh, these these companies that we're working with. But it's really exciting as a physical therapist to be able to see people actually starting to move uh, in the workplace, not having to think about it. So uh, no, it's great. It's fantastic. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you for uh, uh, giving me the couple minutes to interview you. I know you've been very busy. Thank you so much. Have a, have a great rest of the show. Thank you very much. I like that. I really did like the idea of a standing desk that forces you to move. I have a standing desk, but it does not move at all. I'm one <laughs> of those people you referenced that doesn't use a standing desk as a standing desk. I sit at my standing desk. So this would be a good product This would for be you. an excellent product for me. I really did like this. You heard it here first. It was highly recommended. That's right. And it keeps you moving while you're focused at your desk. Well, I really like the, the moving standing desk. There was an actual exercise desk with a bike attached, which may not work out for everyone, but I thought it was worth trying out. By trying it out, you mean you had your associate <laughs> Jory take it for a spin. I, I did try it, but yeah, I totally let Jory work it. <laughs> Let's see how that went. Now we're here at LockTech Ergonomic, where Jory, my lovely assistant, <laughs> is now testing out what is basically a stationary bike with a desk attached to it. And I thought I would have her give a, a little run and see if she likes it. I think it's called Flex Spot. I'm not too sure. The um, uh, the sales reps actually ran away from us. I don't. <laughs> we're not quite sure why. But anyways, all right. So Jory, uh, tell us a little bit about your experience here on this uh, um, exercise. I don't know desk, right? <laughs> exercise desk, I think, would be appropriate. Um, it's pretty interesting. It's definitely uh, resembles an older style of exercise bike. Um, there aren't any foot pedals, which is a little strange, like a foot pedal holder to so keep your foot in the, the spot. They call uh, foot clips. Foot clips. No foot clips. Or shoe clips, I guess. <laughs> but I know what you mean. There's nothing to hold your feet in there. They're just they're just the old the old fashioned pedals. Correct. So uh, on a safety wise and like comfort wise, it's not the uh, total best but in the whole idea of like productivity left and right brain uh, being activated at the same time especially considering there is a desk attached to it um, and it encourages it as a workspace it'd be actually pretty efficient I wouldn't mind uh, having one at home now do you think you're going to be able to work on that or is that I mean how about reading are you getting seasick or are you able to kind of like you're playing on a mock um, computer right now. 
I could see it being um, a little difficult, especially depending upon the task. Uh, for me, as someone who's constantly using Adobe or AutoCAD, um, which takes a little bit of finesse, uh, it could be pretty pretty difficult. But um, in the sense of perhaps reading, or usually whenever I actually use exercise bikes, I'm playing video games. Um, so it could work pretty well in that sense. I think it's just detailed work. But writing papers, sure. Do you think you're going to be, you would be able to actually like use a pen to paper? Um, I'm assuming drawing would be out and, you know, would you feel comfortable? Do you think actually say writing like a, uh, a grocery list? Honestly, I don't know that I could. It's a little bit like uh, pat your head and rub your tummy. <laughs> you know, I don't know that I am, am capable of that. Uh, but the seat, like partially what right now would prompt me to say no is that um, the way the desk is oriented but I do know that the seat and the pedal heights and everything like that can change which might have a better effect on being able to ride and such things like that. Yeah they did uh, before they ran away they did show us that the uh, desk could move closer to your body or further away depending on right depending on what you felt more comfortable with. Well, Jory, thank you so much for being our little test subject here at Lock Tech Ergonomic and uh, looking at the uh, bike desks. You're welcome. You had no one else to talk to, so here you go. <laughs> yeah, nobody wanted to talk to me, and they're all looking at me from the corner of the room. It's pretty funny. All right, on to the next gig. So for this bike desk, was there no spokesperson around? <laughs> Bad pun, but <laughs> correct. <laughs> I did take a virtual reality demo for a ride and learned about some great new options for carpeting by Antron. And we did get to experience it with you, virtually anyway. I'm here with Shay, is that how you pronounce the name? Right. Shay Hinman. With Antron. With Antron. And I'm gonna go, and they have this very cool virtual reality setup that I'm gonna get ready to experience <laughs> oh gosh oh oh boy wow we're looking at the carpet oh ew up to two times better texture retention oh here we go and I'm going around the bend up to ten times better stain resistance uh oh ah uh, I'm being vacuumed on in my 3d reality <laughs> Up to 65% better soil resistance. Okay, I'm following the spec around the bend. A clean environment is a healthy one. Love that. <laughs> Goodbye, spec. Oh. Antron Fiber, please remove your headset at this time. I'm here with Kathy Forstoffer with Invista Antron Brand. Well, I appreciated the the demonstration, and it was it was you know it was quite the the experience. I don't know how else to describe it. Uh, I never thought that carpets would be so much fun, right? <laughs> So one of the things that I learned from the virtual reality experience was is that the fibers have a better performance and, and are able to be cleaned. Easier to clean and when there is dirt in there it's, it gets hidden so uh, it makes it healthier, safer, better for cleanability. So what makes Antron stand out? Um, and, and what makes Anton healthier, a healthier product for other designers to, to think about and in putting into their particular projects? It's more cleanable, more readily cleaned, and if it's cleanable, then it's going to be a more healthy environment. It'll capture the dirt and hide it, and then it's very easily cleaned upon vacuuming and hot water extraction. Our unique fiber shape and uh, cross-section, make that so. Our new uh, Antron Lumina DNA, it's all built in. It can't be washed off or vacuumed out, the performance attributes. And so you have a long-lasting, durable carpet for the life of your carpet. That's terrific. And I also thought it was interesting. I, I came by yesterday because I was kind of fascinated about what you guys do. 
I had uh, talked to one of your sales reps that said also because of this particular fiber, it's less prone to rutting. And so things like uh, wheelchairs, it, it's not a problem from wheelchairs. Can you speak a little bit to that? So our fiber is also made from nylon 6.6, which is a much more durable. Can you explain 6.6? What does that mean? Is that just a random number or what are we talking about here? No, it's where the, it's the nylon, the actual polymer that the fiber is right. made of. Right. Okay is called nylon 6.6 versus polyester or nylon 6 or okay. other polymers. That polymer has a more dense structure and therefore the texture retention mm -hmm. uh, is better than other polymers. And I like so, that texture reten re retention. So you're talking about the crushing and matting that would get by uh, traffic and wheelchairs. Nylon 6.6 is much more resilient to uh, bounce back after it's been crushed and matted. Right. Terrific. Thank you so much, Kathy. It was so great to, to meet you, and, and it was a fabulous trip you know, to do the virtual reality. For everybody listening, uh, we will have on inclusivedesigners.com uh, all the information that we just talked about. Maybe even we'll have some sort of version of the virtual reality. We can, we can hook you up with that as well. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kathy. Thank you. And just remember that fiber does matter. <laughs> you heard it here first at Neocon. Fiber does matter, and clearly it does. That's awesome. Thank you. I love that line, fiber matters too. That one floored me. I didn't think it was possible, but your puns are getting worse. It was fun, though. And speaking of fun, let's tackle one last mystery from Neocon. Just what the name stands for. I was asked and I wasn't sure. Everyone knows this show and what it's about, but not everybody knows what the name stands for. So I took to the show floor to see if it was just me. So we're coming to the end of my stay here at Neocon. And um, I was just gonna start going around and asking people if they know the answer to this very quick and should be simple uh, question. Just so you know, I don't know the answer, and so I am just going around asking people if they do. What does Neocon stand for? <laughs> you got me there. That is actually a really good question. I, I didn't know it stood for anything. I thought it was just the name. Yeah, I think that might actually be the right answer, uh, quite frankly, but I, I'm not sure. So I'm just going to go around and start asking people what they know. It's going to be good. Somebody's going to know the answer to that, but I definitely do not. Do you know what Neocon stands for? That is a great question, and I do not know that answer. You are not alone. <laughs> I, do you, what is the answer? I don't know. I'm hoping to find out. You could have told me it, it means something completely off the charts, and I would have no idea. What does Neocon stand for? Neocon stands for a collaboration of commercial interiors, a place to learn about the new and innovative things that are out there, and to refresh uh, networking opportunities with all of our colleagues around the globe. Well, that's a very interesting answer, but is that actually what Neocon like words? I have no idea. No idea? Well, you're not alone. Nobody knows. But I liked your answer. What does Neocon stand for? What does it stand for, uh, for me personally? No, no, just, just in general, what does it mean? What does Neocon mean? You know what, that's a great question. I don't really know what Neocon means, you know, as far as the terminology. <laughs> Again, you're not alone. Right, 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 right. Everybody, everybody was like, we don't know. And the reason why I'm asking the question is because I don't really know either. I, um, I've been going around and asking a lot of the people that are um, exhibitors here and uh, if they know exactly what Neocon stands for. Everybody I've asked, nobody knows. They all say to me, it's a good question. So I feel good about myself, but that's about, <laughs> that's about the extent of it. So can you actually inform the listeners as to what the, why it's called Neocon? So the... Neocon stands for the National Exposition of Contract Furniture. Simple as that. Aha. Uh -huh. You know, just for a shortcut, Neocon. So that's, that's our loving name for it. And everybody knows it as Neocon. There, I mean, clearly. I mean, you just have to say Neocon and people are, are pretty wowed. Right? They know what it is. They don't know what it means, but they, they know to come. 
That sounds about right. Thank you so much. I was guessing that the con stood for conference. Right? But it doesn't. Their website says it's the National Exposition of Contract Interior Furnishings. Seems like it should be N-E-O-C-I-F instead. So, Neosif? No. It's still Neocon. It's been that way for over 50 years. It's just been Neocon. Okay, so we hope you enjoyed our review of Neosif. Or Neocon, I have, where the I have is silent. We hope you've enjoyed our review of Neocon, I have. I think it still sounds better as Neocon. But if any of you get to go to Neocon next year, you can test people you meet to see if they know what it stands for. And that seems like a good point to stop for today. Agreed. And of course, we will post all of our resources we covered in this episode on our webpage at inclusivedesigners.com. And we look forward to your feedback, too. Send us an email at info at inclusivedesigners.com. Until our next podcast episode, stay well and stay well informed. Thanks for listening. Yes, thanks again.